Breaking nuclear news. This week, it absolutely blew my mind. We will dive right in. First up, price action. The Sprite Raider Miners ETF was up 5.5% on the week. Solid activity, but let's compare that to the broader market, which was also up exactly 5.5%. The entire financial market was just up last week because we had a positive inflationary print. Inflation was slightly lower than expected. And so the market is hoping that the Federal Reserve will be able to pivot away from spiking interest rates up as high as they have been, which would be obviously extremely positive for all risk assets. And so that's what the market is excited about. But we know as long-term investors that short-term price action is completely irrelevant, right? Whether it goes up 10% one week, down 20% the other week, up 15% the next week, doesn't matter, right? As a long-term investor, all that matters is the life-changing potential upside. And so that is why we focus more on the underlying fundamentals of the market instead of the short-term price actions. So let's dive into those underlying fundamentals. First up, when you're investing in a commodity, supply-demand fundamentals are everything. So let's first start with the demand fundamentals of uranium. This comes from the Oregon Group. These are nuclear power reactors, world top countries and global. So currently we have 437, in construction 59, planned 100, proposed 334. <laughs> that is a lot of uranium demand coming online in the next few years, right? And so this chart speaks further to the long-term growth in uranium demand, growth in global nuclear generation. You can see the revision of the estimates. The dotted lines are last year's estimate. The current bold lines are this year's estimate. They just keep growing exponentially. And then we have this, an NEI survey of U.S. utilities says they expect to add up to 90 gigawatts of new nuclear generation by the 2050s, including 300 plus small modular reactors over the next 25 years. This is a long-term growth story. And you do have the small modular reactors just juicing the demand for this space even more as this revolutionary technology proliferates. So that is the long-term growth outlook for uranium demand. Absolutely massive and exponential. Let's look at the short term. What will move the price in the short term? Well, we have the Department of Energy announcing cost-shared reward for first-ever domestic production of HALEU uranium for advanced nuclear reactors. The U.S. Department of Energy today announced an approximately $150 million cost-shared reward with American Centrifuge Operating LLC of Bethesda, Maryland, a subsidiary of Centris Energy Core to demonstrate the nation's ability to produce HALEU a crucial material needed to develop and deploy advanced reactors in the United States. Long story short, the U.S. government is putting its full weight behind subsidizing uranium generation, and they are pumping money into this space. It doesn't get bigger than that. And on top of that, in the short term, we have seasonally bullish demand from nuclear utilities trying to acquire as much uranium as possible. Nuclear fuel industry consultants, UXC, report that utilities have signed long-term contracts for uranium producers for 106.5 million pounds so far this year in 53 transactions, the largest term contract volume in a decade. So the largest in a decade. We're seeing massive spikes in demand for uranium short term. And on top of this, you have Wall Street firms taking supply off the market, just hoarding it, taking it out of the circulating supply, making it scarcer above ground. And so Kazakhstan's new uranium stacking fund, ANU Energy, has updated its development strategy, indicating that it's now raising another $100 million via a private placement with plans to raise another $400 million as it launches an IPO. So again, massive short-term spikes in uranium demand in addition to long-term spikes in uranium demand. And then you have Cameco signing uranium supply agreement with China Nuclear International Corporation. China is counting on nuclear energy to play a major role in its commitment to achieve net zero emissions. Cameco is very pleased to continue increasing our contribution towards the attainment of China's important climate goals. 
So you have China reaching out to a Western company instead of using Russian uranium, which is very interesting. It speaks to how badly they need this resource, that they're going to get it wherever they can possible. And so that is the spiking uranium demand story. Let's look at the uranium supply picture. For those of you expecting supply to just spring out of the ground and flood this market, I hate to disappoint you because... This is showing U.S. domestic uranium production, which is at a pathetically low historic amount. Like, look at through the third quarter of 2022, look at how low that is compared to 2018 and prior. It is pathetic. It is low. There's not enough above ground. We're not producing enough to satisfy this uranium demand. It's just the bottom line. U.S. nuclear power plants require 50 million pounds of uranium annually still waiting for domestic production to return. So it's not happening anytime soon. These are the short-term drivers of supply and demand and the uranium price. Nuclear revival buoys uranium sector, but new mines not on the horizon. And then on top of all this, you have the polarization of the world. You have the East versus the West, people trying to find uranium sources outside of Russia, but Russia maintains grip on global nuclear energy landscape. Increasing use of atomic power would not necessarily free economies from Moscow's influence. Because uranium is such a crucial resource, countries have to turn to Russia whether they like it or not. Now, if countries were to try to sanction Russia, it would obviously spike uranium prices to massively high levels because one of the biggest sources of uranium supply would be gone in an already tight market. But the U.S. is doing what it can to facilitate that. So U.S. revokes Russia's market economy status, giving the USA the ability to apply the full force of the U.S. anti-dumping law to address market distortions caused by Russian goods imported into the U.S. So now because this status has been revoked from Russia, the U.S. can do what it can to try to hurt the incoming supply of goods from Russia, which do include uranium, which is just going to cause further market distortions and a further tightening of supply to the entities that are demanding uranium supply right now. So uranium market moving into net demand growth as European winter closes in. While sanctions on Russian uranium supply have not yet been applied, self-sanctioning is beginning to shut off this important source of secondary supply. Supply is beginning to respond. Namibia's Paladin Energy is due to bring its Heinrich Langer mine into production next year, contributing to an expected 18% increase in the minerals production. Nonetheless, continued Russian sanctions and another year of utility drawdown of inventories is likely to see another pulse in uranium prices, according to Morgan Stanley. And note that this mine from Paladin Energy will not come online until next year. So the screws are just going to get tighter and tighter in the meantime. Even when this mine does come online, it is not going to move the market enough. But it will be great for the first few mines that do get into production like Paladin. Very bullish for them to take advantage of this. And so like every week, let's stay on top of the burgeoning nuclear renaissance that's happening all over the world. That is really kind of the fundamental driver for this massive spike in demand. You do have this very elite billionaire who has a lot of influence among global circles saying this, nuclear is ideal for dealing with climate change because it is the only carbon-free scalable energy source that's available 24 hours a day. Bill Gates believes in the power of nuclear. And so you have the global elite pushing nuclear around the world at COP27. Last year at COP26, they pretty much adopted nuclear power as green. This year, nuclear power industry vies for a bigger role in decarbonizing planet, right? So just further expansion of demand models, right? The bigger the role is, the higher forecasted demand is expected to get. And so we'll stay on top of this conference and see what comes out of it this year. But again, you do have the global elite pumping uranium. And so because of that, let's look at the cascading effects of this around the world. Bulgaria parliament passes motion to speed up supply of non-Russian nuclear fuel. So demand growth accelerating. Canada, federal tax credit means nuclear is key pillar of energy transition. Imagine that nuclear power being the key pillar of the world energy supply. Romania secures $3 billion US funding for two 
nuclear reactors. U.S. ramps up nuclear energy for Africa in showdown with Russia, China. French President Macron and Britain's Prime Minister Sunak pledged ambitious cooperation in the field of nuclear energy. So you have two of the most powerful countries in the world adopting nuclear, getting more ambitious about it. And so let's end on the revolutionary nature of nuclear technology and how it's going to change the world even further than most people are pricing in or expecting. This is from the Office of Nuclear Energy Problem. 95% of hydrogen produced in the U.S. comes from natural gas, resulting in emissions. Solutions, split water into pure hydrogen and oxygen with nuclear power. Clean hydrogen powered by nuclear power. So the world is on the cusp of just getting unlimited sustainable energy. It doesn't get bigger than this. We're in the early stages of mass adoption of nuclear. Power.